I'm sure by now you've seen hundreds of MacBook Pro videos. And if you're anything like me, the more you watch, the more confused you kind of get because of all the information and different opinions you see online. I've always had a 15 to 16 inch form factor when it comes to my laptops because for the longest time, if you wanted power, you kind of have to deal with that size. And even though generally speaking, that's still true, the performance gap between a 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro is smaller than ever. In the past, when I would see my non-architecture friends or non-heavy power user friends carry their MacBook Air or 13 inch MacBook Pro, I would always say something like, man, if I wasn't in the architecture field, if I'm not doing anything intensive like that, I would easily want to have a 13 inch form factor. So when Apple announced the new MacBook Pros and they stated that the 14 inch has the same internals, same CPU, same GPU, and you can configure it the same as the 16 inch and pretty much the only difference is the screen size, I told myself, this is it. This is the year when I get to fulfill that dream of having a smaller laptop. And so shortly after the Apple event, I ordered myself a 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. So I know what you're thinking, how come I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro right in front of me? And after doing my own test, it basically just boiled down to productivity, the extra screen real estate, better thermals and better battery life and also device overlap. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is John Imperial. Today, I just wanted to share my reason for why I ended up with the 16 inch MacBook Pro despite really, really wanting to keep the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Long story short, I ordered the 14 inch shortly after the Apple event. And as days were going by, videos were coming out and I started to watch them and I second guessed my decision. And before I could even cancel my order for the 14 inch, it was already shipped and it was on its way to me. And so I kind of opened the 14 inch. It was hard not to just to compare it with the 16 inch and confirm some of the hunches that I had and also do my own testing. And to be honest, the 14 inch is super, super impressive as you have seen online, but there were just some things about the 16 inch that was hard to let go of. So let me share my reasons with you guys along with some tests that I did. I pretty much had the same specs with the 14 inch and the 16 inch. I went with the M1 Max with 32 core GPU and 32 gigs of RAM. So the first thing I wanted to figure out was portability versus productivity. I believe there's a fine line between the two and finding the sweet spot was a thing that I wanted to figure out. So there's no doubt that the 14 inch is a lot easier to carry, travel with because it's lighter and more portable. So what I really wanted to figure out was how productive can I be with a small device, especially when I'm working on it undocked. So what I did was I committed to working on the 14 inch for half a day and I did my usual tasks. I did some video editing, photo editing, and a little bit of architecture work. And then on the second part of the day, I worked on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I did that for a span of about two or three days. So how was my experience with the 14 inch MacBook Pro? For the most part, like I said earlier, it's really, really impressive. I didn't see any noticeable performance difference when I was switching from the 14 inch and the 16 inch, especially with like regular tasks like just drafting on my architecture programs, video editing, photo editing, none of that was actually slowing down the 14 inch. I was doing some tasks that I know my old 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro Intel would slow down, maybe stutter, but the 14 inch wasn't having that at all. And so that was very, very impressive. One of the main difference that I saw was when it comes to exporting a video and maybe rendering some 3D models, but we'll talk more about that later. If you're already used to having like a 13 inch screen, then going on the 14 inch wouldn't be a problem at all. But for me, when I switched over to the 16 inch, I immediately felt like less claustrophobic in a way because of the extra screen real estate. Not to state the obvious, but there's really just so much more space to work with, especially as an architect, I'm constantly referring to an image, a website, some specs and whatnot. And so I always try to work split screen. And so doing split screen on 
the 14 inch was a little bit tougher. Now there's really no good way to measure productivity, but as soon as I switched to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it just felt like home and I felt more productive working on the 16 inch. Moving over to portability, the 14 inch was just a joy to work on. Moving it over from the office to the couch, to the couch to the dining room, to the kitchen, it's just a lot lighter to carry around. For me personally, I think the 16 inch MacBook Pro is not as heavy and cumbersome as other people are saying out there. Of course, if you compare it to the 14 inch, the 14 inch is better, but that does not take away from how portable the 16 inch MacBook Pro is. In fact, I was able to travel with my 16 inch MacBook Pro like two days after I got it and I had no issues at all. It was comfortable putting it on my backpack. And for me in my use, the extra 1.2 pound of the 16 inch MacBook Pro is worth because of the bigger screen that I'm getting. I personally think that if you have your laptop dock 80 to 90% of the time, that's even more reason why you should get the 16 inch MacBook Pro because you're not carrying it all that much, but it's dependent on how and where and why you use it within those 10 to 20% that you don't have it docked. The second thing I wanted to check was performance versus battery life. So I did some basic tests because I wanted to see how both devices actually perform in the kind of work that I do. When it comes to video editing, like I said earlier, when you're just cutting clips, playback, basically video editing, I see no difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch other than of course the extra space. But when it comes to exporting a video, then that's where I saw a little bit more of a difference. So what I did was I exported my home design office video, which was shot in 4K, 21 minutes long. It's a very typical video for me. And here are the results that I got. The 16 inch MacBook Pro rendered the video for 38 minutes and eight seconds. And the battery went from 100% to 66%. And then the 14 inch rendered the video for 39 minutes and 42 seconds. And the battery went from 100 to 41%. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro used about 34% of its battery life while the 14 inch used 59% of its battery life. You might look at those numbers and say, wow, the 14 inch used 25% more battery to do the same tasks, but that's actually not true. You need to remember that the 16 inch MacBook Pro has a 100 watt battery while the 14 inch has a 70 watt hour battery. So if we pretend that the 14 inch has the same battery size as the 16 inch, it still used up about 7% more than the 16 inch. It rounds up to about 41.3%. So the real question is, is that a big deal? Only you can answer. For me personally, that's not a big difference. I actually thought it would be more, but yeah, that's not a big deal at all. I'm more concerned about performance. But what that tells me is that the 16 inch doesn't just have a bigger battery. It actually runs a little bit more efficiently. While rendering, I paid attention to the fans and for the 14 inch, it started to turn on at around a minute 30 and it didn't stop until the export ended. It stayed at around 4,500 RPM for most of the renders and it would ramp up at certain parts for up to 5,800 RPM. And on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it wasn't running the whole time. It would turn on and off. And when it would turn on, it stayed at an average of 2,200 to 2,400 RPM, which actually is barely audible. If you have music playing, background noise and all of that, it kind of just blurs into the background. And at some point of the render, I had to take out the 14 inch away from the room so that I can properly hear the fans of the 16 inch. It's super impressive pretty quiet. And when it comes to my architecture work, I'm still on the AutoCAD plus SketchUp workflow. 
that works perfectly but I've been thinking about transitioning to ArchiCAD for a while now. So I decided to download the free trial and do some tests over there. Since I have very little experience with ArchiCAD, I actually just downloaded a sample project. So I was moving around, pretending to draft and delete walls and pretend that I was drafting and also view pre-created like sheets, sections, like perspective and all of that. And it works perfectly. The performance on both the 14 inch and 16 inch was very, very similar. No fans were turning on when I was just modeling and all of that stuff. But when I rendered, that's when I saw a difference again. Same theme as the video editing. And so I rendered a particular scene and although the 16 inch MacBook Pro rendered that scene only 29 seconds faster, how it was performing during that time was really impressive. The 16 inch MacBook Pro hovered at around 2200 RPM for most of the test, while the 14 inch MacBook Pro was hovering around 4800 to 5000 RPM, which is a big difference. This basic test just tells me that the 16 inch MacBook Pro can handle tasks like this better. And if I have a more intricate model, and I consider the model that they had not very detailed, right? If I had a more intricate model, then I won't have a problem. I just have that much more headroom. And when it comes to battery life, although I lost my notes on the exact battery percentage when we started and when it ended, you can kind of just see here that the 14 inch started at about 80% and ended less than 50%. It's probably more like actually 30%. And with the 16 inch, it started at about 90% and ended at around 70%. And so that's a big difference. And the last thing that really pushed me into deciding on keeping the 16 inch MacBook Pro over the 14 inch is device overlap. Right now I have a perfect separation between my devices. I can use my iPad for light to medium work and I use my laptop for medium to heavy tasks. Also, when I compared the screen size of the 11 inch with the 14 inch, it's pretty close to me, in my opinion, for my taste. And so when I'm working on my 11 inch iPad Pro, I already feel crammed and I'm only doing light to medium tasks. And when I'm doing medium to, you know, like really heavy tasks, I would want more screen real estate. And so that's kind of my logic. And I just love having that clear separation. And I know that I could use my iPad if I need something more portable, like on the plane sketching there and doing some light work or whatnot. And I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro for heavy lifting. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I hope I helped you in your decision making. If you're stuck between 14 inch and 16 inch, let me know which one you end up deciding. And if you want my final thoughts, 14 inch, if you really, really, really want portability and for everything else, I vote 16 inch MacBook Pro. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.